Right, now we come to another new club, if you like, from a championship point of view, is Hunt Sailing Club. Hunt. Yeah. Mm -hmm. A Hunt Sailing Club adopted Moth when they were still on the river at Huntingdon near, near St Ives. Mm. And uh, I won their first ever open meeting actually on the river. And at that time there was a, a man called Jeff Ambrose who'd gone into building uh, moss in a sort of stitch and glue kind of fashion, mm -hmm. a bit like the mirror dinghy designed yeah. by Barry Bucknell. Great <laughs> boat, introduced so many people for sailing for mm. such a, so, so little money. Yeah. So Jeff Ambrose had the same idea, the boats were very, very light, a bit fragile mind you, but they did well enough and his son uh, sailed number 641 which was uh, uh, you know the most successful of his designs at that time but there were quite a lot of them built so in the meantime between they, when they had their first open meeting they managed to get a gravel pit at uh, Hunts mm. and uh, <coughs> it was near a proposed uh, bypass which eventually when it was built uh, uh, did them a huge flavour because it sort of got rid of a complete sort of fairly dense forest down one end of their lake and made their sailing a lot better yeah. but it's quite a big lake and when the championships was, was due within a few days I developed flu and I was in quite a state and somebody from the local newspaper uh, took my photo and I appeared in my boat looking extremely haggard with a, with a caption like Cooper defends his title. At that <laughs> time I felt like <laughs> finding a hospital bed and sailing that. Yeah. Yeah. Anyway, um, there were a couple of very very keen racing types at Cam, one of them Peter Fordham and uh, Rod Seeker. The two of them were the two hot shots, and they both had moths, and I think they were Ambrose uh, designs. And I remember it well because the laser had just been introduced in this country, and Peter Fordham uh, was one of the main agents to introduce the laser at that time. I remember that well. And this Rod Seeker, he was very, very good. He would uh, win nearly all the events up there. So it was widely expected that he would win the championships that year. Mm -hmm. But unfortunately for me, it was an extremely windy event, so I was hanging on sort of mid, mid fleet all the time. And Rod Seeker only had to uh, win the last race to win the championships, but uh, also up with quite a chance was. Um, uh, was uh, John Davis from Cam Sailing Club mm. and he was sailing number 621 later later that was uh, owned by David Bryant oh, yeah. who unfortunately died um, so he called it Hunker Munker 621 and the last race which was on the Saturday morning had to um, he had to win that but it was a very, very calm sort of day. And uh, in the first beat to windward, Rod Seeker got to the windward mark first, and I followed him, and we both managed to get round on port. And also coming behind us closely was um, Mike Hudsmith from the Royal St. Ports Yacht Club, mm -hmm. and he was sailing 4.11 and unfortunately a lift came and the starboard fleet came charging in. I got round with a fair bit to spare and uh, old Mike Hudsmith thought he could as well but he couldn't and there was a hell of a jam there and every, the whole fleet more or less stopped at the windward mark due to Mike crashing in. Mm. So I followed uh, uh, Rod Seeker down on the run to the leeward mark and I knew that, you know, once it was a windward work, I could go straight past him, and I did. But Rod Seeker absolutely fell to pieces. He finished somewhere in the teens, and of course, 
uh, although I'd done lousy all the week, I did win the Solent Cup this that year. Yeah. And uh, if Godfrey's listening, <laughs> he could put the record straight because he hasn't got me winning the Solent Cup, which I did. It was the last day. Yeah. So anyway, it meant that Davis won the championship from Kane. And shortly after that, he emigrated to um, Canada. Mm -hmm. So we never saw him, yeah. uh, but he was a nice lad. Now that was, was Hunt Sailing Club. All right, next one then, we're on Stuart's train, that trail now. We, we're going down to Chew Valley Lake. <laughs> <laughs> and that was really laid on because of um, um, our presidents, am I right? Cyril Hill. S huh? Cyril? Cyril, yes. Yeah. Cyril Hill. Yeah. He was uh, quite prominent in the West Country for his OA, OA connections and uh, he managed to get us a championship, I believe, in Chew Valley. Mm -hmm. If you've never sailed at Chew Valley, well, it's certainly worth your while. It's a lovely, lovely situation, you know. Yeah. They've had terrible floods there, haven't they, this year? True yeah, Magnet. That's right. Right. People have seen it on the television. So that one was won by Janet, and there's a story to that as well. <coughs> um, in the last race, always drama in the last race in a Moss Championship. <laughs> I only had to win the last race to win the championships and I had a 300 yard lead with a finishing line nearby at less than 200 yards further on. Yeah. And behind me was Janet Galland who was going to come second if I'd won anyway. But as I was close, it was a beat to the finishing line and behind the Chew Valley Lake Club Room, there's quite a hill, and the whirly jig wind came down viciously and it luffed me very, very hard and then completely switched on the other side. So it pushed the boat clean on top of me and I went completely turtle <laughs> at 200 yards to the line. Oh, dear. <laughs> so uh, I was pretty fit in those days, so uh, I managed to get the boat up and finish second, but that one, that one, that one in that year, that should have been mine. <laughs> <laughs> but a lovely place, Chew Valley Lake. I always remember it for the hot air balloons. Yeah, coming right it's down great, the Yes, water. because yeah. it's in the west, they choose a nice weather and they, they can drift inland for miles, you know. Mm. 